I really need a time machine. Not so that I could go back and live in the past. I don't think I'd want to live back then. I just want to go shopping. <laughs> Is that too much to ask? <laughs> Hi everyone, Kate here, and this week we are going to be going fantasy shopping for a dream summer wardrobe. This is probably a less educational video than the style I normally make, but I was just in the mood for something sort of chatty and fun and no pressure. <laughs> I didn't want anything too brain intensive right at the moment, it's, it's been one of those weeks. <laughs> Now, fantasy shopping is one of my favorite hobbies. It basically involves flipping through an antique catalog or a catalog reprint and deciding what you would have bought. <laughs> I find it a lot of fun, although it's slightly depressing when you realize you can't actually order any of these things anymore. <laughs> yeah, that part kind of sucks. <laughs> Now, originally I was just going to flip through all of my antique catalogs and pick all sort of fun summer items, but I quickly realized that would make for a very, very long and rather tedious video. So I decided to scale it down a bit and just make my selections from one antique catalog. I would have loved to do a catalog from the 1910s because I am really into the 1910s fashion right at the moment. But unfortunately, that is the only decade that I am catalog deficient in. Not intentionally, it's just reprints from that era seem to be very hard to come by. I don't think they made many reprints of the 1910s because it's a less popular decade for some reason. I don't understand. I love the 1910s. As an alternative to the 1910s, I decided to go with the 1930s, mostly because I had this absolutely stunning Midsummer catalog from 1934. Isn't she pretty? <laughs> the other good thing about this catalog, other than it just being absolutely gorgeous, is that it is a Midsummer catalog. And while originally this video was supposed to be out beginning of July, I'm a bit behind schedule. <laughs> And as it's going to be August by the time that you guys are seeing this, uh, midsummer seemed a little more appropriate. <laughs> now that we've picked out the catalog, it's time to set down the rules, because nothing makes something more fun than a whole bunch of arbitrary rules. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so for this shopping trip, through my mind, <laughs> we are going to be shopping for an entire summer wardrobe, including both fashions and accessories. The only thing that I ended up being a little deficient on is jewelry, but we definitely bought hats and shoes. I'm definitely going to be trying to get sort of a capsule wardrobe. Now, they weren't called capsule wardrobes in the 1930s. They were just called your wardrobe. Because <laughs> you didn't have as many pieces as you do nowadays. But I'm definitely going to be trying to make sure everything at least somewhat coordinates so that pieces can be mixed and matched and I don't have to worry about things clashing. To a certain extent. I mean, I'm going to have fun with it, but just keeping that in mind that I'm going to try to be sticking to at least somewhat of a color scheme. Since I know if I just flipped through the catalog and picked out all the pieces I would like to buy, I'd buy everything. I also decided to give myself a budget. Of course, I didn't want to just pull a number out of my hat, so I did a bunch of I did a bunch of research. I know I just said that this was not going to be a research intensive video. I couldn't help myself. I wanted a, a number that made sense for my budget. So I checked some 1920 sources and then applied an inflation calculator because I had some really good 1920s information on the subject, as well as checking some things like radio transcripts from the mid 30s, just to get an idea of what a, a young professional woman might have spent on clothing. In the end, I came up with a rough seasonal budget of about $20. Now, of course, this budget would not have applied to everybody living in the 1930s, just like nowadays, how much you spend on clothing is going to vary wildly depending on your life circumstances, your income, how if you have any dependents, if you're married, all that jazz. So this $20 is just something to give me a rough guideline of how much I want to spend. I probably actually put way too much thought into this, seeing that the number doesn't really matter. <laughs> I'm not actually buying anything. This is all in my head. <laughs> You do not want to know how long it took me to come up with that number. It was kind of silly. 
<laughs> Anyways, <laughs> without any further ado, let's just get shopping. All right, so let's start by taking the catalog out of its plastic. I always keep all my magazines in a acid-free archival grade plastic sleeve just to protect them a bit. So here is the catalog. This is my Eaton's Midsummer Sale catalog from 1934. So this isn't a full Eaton's catalog. It's sort of just a little supplementary catalog with some of their summer items. So you can notice it's sort of, it's just like magazine size. It's not full, full catalog size. So this shouldn't take too long to go through, but we'll start at the beginning and we will see what we see. I think it's kind of interesting on the cover. The thing that they're promoting the most is actually their fabrics. It's not their clothing. Like we have pictures of dresses here, but these are actually clothing that you could make with the fabrics that they're advertising rather than them advertising actual garments per se. Now, my Women's Institute book from the 1920s did actually suggest making a lot of your own garments, so that may be a way to try to save money. If I think I'm spending close to my $20 limit and I feel like I need a few more dresses or something, I'm going to come back and look at this fabric. Oh, man, 29 cents a yard for fabric. <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> okay, so let's open this puppy up. So I have to be, I have to be really careful because this thing is kind of falling apart and Old paper is very delicate, so let's just carefully open that up. Oh, I'm going to have to move my pine cones and my little flowers. They're, they're aesthetically pleasing, but they're in my way. <laughs> ah, 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 ah. Trying to be so gentle. This actually has tape along the, the hinge, which I did not do. Do not tape your old magazines, because tape can cause further damage and definitely degrade it over time. I don't know what kind of tape this was. It's... Not discolored yet, so hopefully whoever did this used acid-free tape, but I have no way of knowing, so I just have to be very gentle. <laughs> so first page in, we're actually still talking mostly about fabric. We do have some blankets and, and linen goods as well. Those are cute blankets, though. Wow. I like those little flannels. That's That's adorable. But yeah, we have more <laughs> more fabric at prices you do not see anymore. May come back to that. I'm just going to have an initial look through. This is kind of like how I antique shop. I always walk through the whole store. And then anything that sticks in my mind, I know that's what I actually want. So I know to go back for it. Because if I just picked everything up the first go around, I would buy everything. <laughs> Okay, so now we're starting to get into some of the ladies' wear, although this stuff down here is for children, so we're mostly looking up here. I quite like these black pumps here. Uh, it's supposed to be a punch hole detailing, so those are like little little holes, which that'd be nice in the summer, give a bit of ventilation. But it's in this nice little curly Q pattern. Okay, if I have to get house slippers like the book suggested, these are adorable. <laughs> these are really cute. I don't know how comfortable they'd be for a long amount of time, but I really like the little... The little strap there. How much are those? Those are... Of course, I like the most expensive ones. What's the... Oh, the middle of the road ones aren't bad. I don't mind the black canvas ones here. Durable leather toe caps and low heels with rubber top lifts. They come in women's three, four, five, six, seven, and 8. I'm going to hope that sizing has changed since then. I don't really know the equivalent in modern shoe sizes, because I'm a nine in modern shoes, so <laughs> those wouldn't fit. So there are tons of shoes on the next page. Actually, I like a lot of these better. Those are cute. Those are really cute. Let's, let's zoom in on those. Arch supports for walking. Neat and comfortable shoes made of black kid in an open tie style with cutouts on the sides. I don't, th those might be it. Although, actually... These ones up here, these come in white. Apparently, according to this catalog, in 1934, white accessories was where it was at. That was very trendy for summer this year. Fashion says white. They're white. They're popular. They show the punching so fashionable this season. And they're a bargain. Women's white leather shoes in a smart tie style that is comfortable too for walking. Note the sale price. 
$1.98. I love the old fashioned style of high heel. I actually have some modern shoes that have a very similar shape to them, and they are so much more comfortable than the modern style of high heel. They really are a lot better for walking in. So those might be it. I don't know. I think I want to be trendy and fashionable with white accessories. We'll see what dress I pick out. I'm going to have to pick out my dresses and my blouses and things first, I think. And then maybe we'll get some shoes. I think I want to be popular and fashionable. <laughs> in my fantasy life. <laughs> Not that in real life, so <laughs> might as well pretend. These are really cute here too. They're great value and they're smart. Side tie shoes of this type fit very neatly across the instep. There is also a cutout design in front and a punch pattern on the vamps. That seems to have really been big, all these punch styles for summer, which totally makes a lot of sense. If you're going to be wearing leather shoes in the summer, it'd be really nice to have some ventilation in there with all these little little punch effects. Plus they're really pretty, so that, that's interesting. I kind of like the little the side tie detail. That's really different rather than just the regular tie up the front. Those are snazzy. Oh, men's hats in the 1930s were so great. They are absolutely fabulous. So we have, oh, we have yarn over here. Oh, wait, getting distracted. I was going to look at the clothing, but yarn. <laughs> 25 cents for a hank of yarn. Oh, man, that's almost painful. <laughs> 25 cents. A dollar per pound of fingering weight wool. <sighs> I wish. I am a knitter. I could theoretically spend some of my budget knitting myself a sweater. It comes in black, white, gray buff, brown cardinal, brown heather, love it heather, and navy. Ooh, cardinal. That sounds really pretty, like a bright, bright red sweater. <gasps> Ooh. They also have this pansy knitting yarn, which sounds very nice. This is a little bit more expensive, but it comes in a lot more fun colors. We have black, white, sky, pink, mauve, nile, marigold, copen, jockey red, old rose, buttercup, maroon, pandora, buff, azure blue, and brown. I wonder what color pandora is. That sounds pretty. It says it's suitable for afghans, sweaters, cushions, and scarves. So that if it's suitable for scarves, it's probably going to be soft enough to make a fairly nice sweater. Maybe like a mauve? Or marigold. I don't usually wear sort of yellowy orangey colors, but I just I think I just like the name. Ooh, pretty aprons. I love aprons. I don't wear aprons nearly enough. I usually just spill all over myself, but I really like the embroidery on that. That's cute. Okay, so we're finally starting to get into some of the actual clothing rather than supplies to make clothing. And they're calling these accessories. These are little blousettes. I'm really sure what they mean by a blousette. I was really curious about this first time I looked through this catalog and I looked up what blousette is defined as and it's defined as like a sleeveless blouse but these all have sleeves. So if anybody knows what the history behind that term is I would love to know. I'm not sure what the difference between a blousette and a blouse is because these all look like blouses to me. <laughs> we have the poncho blousette little rayon blousette, a poncho blousette. I guess so I'm pretty sure these poncho ones, the sleeve is just all part of it. Like there's probably no seam under that arm. I actually have a long sleeve blouse that's kind of made in a similar style. So, which I, which actually looks really flattering. I really like that blouse. So that's something to consider. Oh, and then we have this little uh, dainty lace blousette. That's going on my list. I am getting a dainty lace blousette. It's described as a dainty all over cotton lace blousette with snug fitting ribbing at the waist and sleeves. Uh, let's see, it comes in white or eggshell. I'm definitely getting white because I do not look good in creams. Dainty lace blousette. Ooh, what's this? Fashion flashes. It's new, it's smart. The two purpose jacket blousette. Frills extend around the neckline and down button vesti front can be worn as a jacket or a blousette. So I think based on the pictures, it's just got buttons down the front and you can either wear it over top 
as like a jacket or have it buttoned up like a top. So that's quite cute. That would be sort of dual purpose. Um, it comes in just white. Okay, so it's only coming in white. Uh, I'm not a big white blouse kind of person. So I really like the style of that, though. That's really pretty neckline. So we'll have to think about that. Ooh, while we're on this page, we should buy some gloves. Uh, I don't think there's any gloves later on. I think this is most of the... Yeah, then we're into hosiery. So let's let's buy gloves while we're looking at them. Mesh. Ooh, that would be much cooler than, than the hot leather gloves we have over here. So let's get some of these mesh ones. Maybe I'll get two pairs of gloves. One, one to wear and one in the wash. Uh, white only, but I mean, white accessories are in apparently. So that's good. I don't know which pair. So we have, this is called pull on style. The next one down is the one dome style and then the one button style. I think I like the one button style the best. It's got sort of a fancy cuff here with little scalloped, scalloped lace border, I think. Yeah, we'll get two of the one button style. Actually, no, let's get one of the one button style and one of the pull on style. Ooh, hosiery sale. Okay, we're going to have to get some stockings. Colored cotton hose. Oh, that sounds nice. I do like uh, cotton cotton hose rather than just nylons. And then we have real silk hose. Rayon and real silk. I'm not a big silk fan, so I think I'm going to get some rayon hose for my, my hosiery choice here. Uh, they have three pairs for 80 cents, which sounds pretty good to me. And they come in a bunch of different colors. I'm going to get... They don't come in black. Oh, that's weird. I, I always wear black tights. Maybe that wasn't a thing. No, a lot of these don't come in black. Let's get gunmetal then. I prefer a dar darker stocking, so we'll get gunmetal. It's supposed to be very low sale price. So three pairs for 80 cents. I hope that's enough to get me through the summer, but... We're going to assume that I do already have some stockings. These are just replacement stockings. So. Ooh, more accessories. So now we're on hats. Continuing with the white trend. White is headline fashion news. So as I said before, white was apparently a big deal for accessories in the summer of 1934, at least in Canada, because this is a Canadian catalog. So we are definitely going to get a white hat to go with our white... Oh, we haven't bought shoes yet. We're going to buy white shoes anyway. <laughs> So let's get a white hat to go with our white shoes. We are definitely getting a beret. I am a, I am a beret kind of person. So we're going to get the beret in, it does come in white. It comes in white, black, copen, brown, beige, and navy. I read those in the wrong order. Anyway, it comes in different colors. So we're going to get white. I like some of these other hats too, though. Some of those, that's really cute. Or you get the two piece set. So it comes with the collar and the hat. Oh, I kind of like that idea of having like a matching hat and a collar. Ooh, I might have to sew something, some little set. That would be adorable. Some of these are really cute as well, too. I don't want to buy my other hat yet because I know there's some on the next page, but oh, I really like that little hat there. It's made of washable terry cloth. Oh, that's different. I don't think I've ever seen a terry cloth hat. That would probably look really stupid. <laughs> wearing a towel hat. Well, I don't know how I feel about that. I really like the, the cut of it, but <laughs> terry cloth. <laughs> okay, maybe not. Uh, ooh, beach or garden hat. Uh, it's gay and colorful for the beach or garden. Comes in a neutral color. I think that just means like natural straw color. It doesn't really specify, but yeah, we'll have to get a straw hat. We need a straw hat for the beach. So let's get that for 25 cents as well. Oh, we are finally on to some of the proper fashion, some of the dresses. So these look more like for younger girls. I am certainly not a young girl anymore. So as cute as those are, we will be skipping those. But here we go. Here's some more adult stuff over here, inclu ooh, including some bathing suits. Now I know there's some other bathing suits later on, so I'm not going to buy a bathing suit yet because there's some, there's some better ones coming up. But let's see what else we have. We have a really hot looking coat that we're... <laughs> no, no, thank you. Oh, that's a cute little... What, what, is this supposed to be a play suit? Free and easy for the hottest days. So it's supposed to be a little play suit or beach romper. 
has a sleeveless top trimmed with self bands and pocket. Shorts have side opening with button domes and buckled belt. It comes in blue and white, red and white, or green and white. Ooh, green and white. I wonder what shade of green. As an alternative to the play suit, there's also this. It's described as the useful outfit for summer. It's a shirt, skirt, and shorts all combined. So this is actually more expensive than the play suit, but it's like three pieces in one. Outfit comprises of a button down the front skirt, shorts pleated in the front, and three button fastening on each side. Tuck-in shirt with short sleeves and roll collar made of shirting striped cotton broadcloth in blue and white or green and white. Oh, I like that. That's like three pieces in one. Now, it's more expensive. I don't know if it's really that much of a bargain, but I need something. Hmm. Let's see. I'm going to write down play suit, and we'll come back based on how much money we have left at the end, because <laughs> I have a feeling I'm going to be spending a fair bit soon on dresses and things, so we'll, we'll leave that open. <gasps> oh, oh, ripping, ripping. Careful, careful, careful. There we go. Ah, the staples are popping a bit in this thing. <laughs> I'm trying to be very careful, but this thing is pretty delicate. So we have coats. My book told me I needed a summer coat. So, oh, there's more coats on the other side too. <gasps> oh, oh, I want that one. Those ones are boring. I want that one. <laughs> a linen swagger suit. I want a swagger suit so badly. There's a knitted swagger coat that I've seen online that is absolutely fabulous, which I would probably never have the patience to knit, but uh, I definitely want a swagger suit. This one is linen, and I guess they're not really giving many details. We just buy it. We just buy it. That's going on the list. Swagger suit. Linen. Swagger. Suit. And that's going to serve as my summer jacket as well, because that jacket could probably go with other things. So I guess I'm going to try to stick in the blue color scheme. Blue and white for summer sounds quite nice. And if I'm trying to create a capsule wardrobe, these will have to match. So that's, there goes a fair bit of my budget right there. $3.98. <laughs> I kind of like this, <laughs> this suit here too. It's kind of ugly, but <laughs> be the first to wear the new waffle cloth. <laughs> yes, that's what I want to do. I want to look like a giant waffle. <laughs> it's even waffle colored. Like it's, <laughs> it's not like it's textured, but in sort of, you know, a, a fun color of some sort. It's it's literally waffle colored. <laughs> oh man, I want to be a waffle. <laughs> oh, that's a bargain over here. We haven't gotten a skirt yet. Uh, a l Irish linen skirt for $1.49. I actually have a skirt pattern very similar to that that I had plans to make sometime. Um, there's not many more skirts, I don't think, coming up. So let's get the linen skirt as well looks like sort of a naturally, I don't know if it's quite a natural linen color, sort of a yellowy color, which will look nice with the blue. They look nice together. I haven't picked a swimsuit yet either, so I think I'm going to pick from one of these. These are some of my favorite ones. I really like this one with the ties in the back. That's that's a really interesting design detail. I don't know if there's, there's no, there's no more bathing suits, so it's going to be these or the other ones. What What is it? Oh, they have descriptions on the other page. I didn't notice. The descriptions are all over here. I guess I don't read very well. <laughs> now, I could just get the very basic one up here, but I think I'm going to get this little swimsuit here. And we're going to get it in blue, I think. Yeah, so $1.98 for the blue swimsuit with the tie back. Oh, and bathing shoes to match. I normally swim up at a lake, and the bottom's pretty mucky, so bathing shoes sound good. <laughs> Oh, but those are really cute beach sandals. <gasps> Ooh, that's a hard choice. Now, I think I'm going to go with the bathing shoes rather than sandals for this purpose. They may get cut if I'm spending too much money. <laughs> those aren't optional. Ooh, okay, so where to even start with these? These are all so pretty. I really, really like this one here. Youthful Sunday night. A graceful frock of the dressier type. It's got it's got lace up here and this cute little collar detail. It's very, very feminine, and <laughs> I definitely lean towards a more feminine style. I quite like the look of menswear. It's just not really for me. I am uber, uber feminine, so I really, really like that one. That one's a little boring. It says it's easily laundered, despite the fact it's totally white, <laughs> but eh, not really my thing. 
that also is I don't know I don't know why it strikes me as boring because it's got it's got quite a wild print and everything but nah this is where the hard decisions happen <laughs> this one I think I'm definitely gonna get that would probably look cute with the coat that I'm getting yes yeah so we are definitely going to get that I really like this one it's a little more subtle than perhaps I am normally drawn to but it's this beautiful navy with just this bright bit of color down the front peeking out very very attractive that's lovely that's very elegant picture yourself in this style leader the style world is enthused with this engaging fashion here it is at Eaton's at very modest prices the fitted hip line the graceful jabot lapels the contrasting printed real silk material peeping out all down the front are all points of high fashion importance and a very becoming style for most women in dark and pastel shades. Oh, it comes in different colors. Oh, that's exciting. Com this is commander blue. I think I want commander blue, but it also comes in maize, which is probably like a kind of a corn color. W water lily green. Ooh, a light green. Oh, that sounds really pretty. I think I'm going to have to get the blue, though, just because it'll match my wild... I'm, I'm going to be quite colorful. Uh, it's going to match my coat on the other page a bit better. So let's let's get that for sure. Ooh, that one's fairly expensive. That's probably, like, the most expensive dress on the page <laughs> at $5.95. Ooh, okay. We're splurging here, but that is so gorgeous. I don't know that it... No, that would probably look cute with my white beret. White beret with white shoes with the, the navy, because there is some white in the silk down the front. So, And she's got white gloves on. So yeah, I think that'll work. Also, while we're down here, I think I need this dress. <laughs> I think I need it right now. <laughs> That's really cute. I know I said I like really floofy things, um, but sometimes I like really simple, elegant things too. And that color, oh, that's what they're calling water lily green. That is gorgeous. That would probably look really nice with my uh, my red hair too. And then the white accessories. Oh, <gasps> yes, that is happening. That one's only $2.98. So that one's definitely cheaper than some of the, the other ones. I mean, it's not cheap, cheap. It's kind of mid-range, I guess. But that one is definitely happening. It doesn't tell me where to get the matching hat, though. Does it come with a matching hat? All these dresses have hats that match, but... They don't actually feature these hats in the catalog because that's exactly the same color. Aw, oh, I don't know. I want the hat. <laughs> oh well, we're going to buy it anyway. There's some more beautiful styles on this page, but I think these are not for me, I don't think. This one's a little too too frilly, even for me. <laughs> a bit too uh, frou-frou. I don't like frou-frou. I like feminine, but I'm not a... a twee, frilly, frou-frou-y kind of person. And these ones are just kind of ugly. <laughs> Sorry, no offense, uh, Eaton's designers from 1934, but, like, what is this? Look at that. That that looks, that just looks cheap. Be smart and thrifty at Eaton's. Nah, no thank you. Well, we'll get something a little, a little nicer. That one's not bad, though. That's kind of cute. But these other ones, meh. I don't really like the trim on that. I guess it's supposed to be sort of like a little uh, rickrack trim or something. Not a fan. Not a fan of that page. I kind of like the concept of that dress, like having the scarf kind of go under the neckline, but mm, no, no. I like my I like my little green dress better. They're the same price, so definitely going to get the other one. Oh, we have some more dresses over here. These are more... Well, I guess I don't know if you'd see... Oh, <gasps> shoes! Oh, sorry. <laughs> I was going to talk about the dresses, but I got distracted by shoes. Let's do dresses first. Let's finish off with the dresses. I think I have one fancy dress. I have one um, sort of nice dress. And I think I need a house dress as well. So let's get one of these. Oh, I really like Hoover dresses. They they tie around the side, so they're easy to change in and out of. Maybe we'll get a Hoover one. Those are, oh, those are fairly expensive too. These floral print ones. These are cute here. Fresh, cool, stripes, dots, easy to, to tub? Does that say easy to tub? What? <laughs> I don't know what that means. What do you mean easy to tub? Easy to tub. I'm sure that's a T. Easy to jub? 
easy to maybe it just means easy to wash. I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> um, what are these? Are these cotton? These are not telling me. They're cheap, but they're not telling me what they're made out of. Mystery fabric. Okay. Oh, these ones over here that are a bit more expensive actually say cotton broadcloth. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. As much as I like the, the Hoover dress, I think I'm going to go with one of these cheap dotted ones because I already spent, I kind of splurged on my fancy dress. So let's get, let's get this one. The, the easy to tub one. <laughs> so that is the trim dotted print. It comes in white with navy or green dots. We're going to go white with navy to match our coat. I'm going to write tub dress. That makes no sense. <laughs> and that's 77 cents. So let's go back to this other page for a second. So there's some gorgeous dresses on here too, but I think I've already splurged on, on all my dresses. I really like this one in peach, but I know peach doesn't suit me, so we're not going to bother buying those. Ooh, they got some, uh, some knickers and stuff here. Mm, I don't think I got, there are more knickers later on, so we're, we're going to wait for the knickers, but we are going to buy some shoes. I haven't made any decisions about shoes yet, but these are really pretty. Are those, I guess those are holes in them? Yeah, they're cutouts. So good for ventilation. I don't know if those are more expensive than the other ones. Let's go back for a second. Where were the, where were the other shoes? Oh, mo most of these are the same price. Ooh, I don't know if I want to get a pair of Oxfords. No, I'm going to be fancy and I'm going to get a white pair of the side, side shoes here. I'm going to have to add this up soon and see what, see what I'm coming to. So those were $1.98. Ah, I'm losing everything. I'm losing all my notes. $1.98. I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm over budget, but whoa. I dropped my Victorian calisthenics. <laughs> You know, as one does. So I think we need a pair of like fancy shoes for evening too. I'm going to say the other ones are my day shoes and we're going to get a pair of chic sandals in white. I really like the lounge wear too. This is the 1930s. So you are starting to see more socks sort of slipping into ladies fashion, although more as sort of active wear, beach wear, lounge wear. These are called lounging slacks and they are amazing. There's cool comfort in these linen cotton slacks and jacket. They're calling it linen in brackets cotton. So I think that's a brand name that's trying to sound like actual linen, but they're not. Um, they're cotton. The smart lounging costume for summer. Slacks of oyster linen. Jackets and patterns of various designs and shades. Sale price, $1.43. Is that the whole suit for $1.43? We're definitely buying one of those. Maybe we'll get that instead of the play suit. Okay, so now we're on to underwear. We better get some underwear. Underwear is kind of not as exciting as pretty dresses, but we should buy some. Uh, we'll have to get a slip. Let's get the... Oh, I actually really like that one over here. The 49 cent slip. So we'll get a slip for 49 cents. Nobody's going to be looking at my slip, so I might as well get a cheap one. But that, I mean, that's really cute too. Uh, is it, what is it made out of? Uh, broadcloth. Uh, it comes in pink or white. I will get, well, I'll probably get white. And what else do we have? Oh, keep cool in these pajamas. So these are almost more like beach pajamas. They're talking about uh, for the beach for those ones. I did already buy the, the lounging slacks, so maybe I don't get pajamas too. I need some, I need some bloomers though. Two for 49 cents. We'll get the cheap bloomers because I, I don't spend money on things that nobody's going to see. <gasps> You're sure it's a bargain at Eaton's. At a price that tells you now is the time to buy. It pays to buy from Eaton's sale. <laughs> Except they don't actually tell you what the sale price is compared to the regular price. <laughs> well, I kind of like the dainty lingerie. So here we're starting to see more like little, they're, they're calling them panties, like tap pants, rather than just the giant bloomers. I, I might have to get a pair of those. So those are 39 cents. So let's get a pair of the, what what we would now refer to as tap pants. And I think I need a little bralette as well. That one is 27 cents. Okay, so that's two pairs of the bloomers 
the tap pants and the bralette. That's probably good for, for summer underwear. Summery nightgowns, two styles, your choice, 79 cents. Made in Scotland. Okay, let's get one of these. These are cute. I did, I'll need something to wear at night in the summer. So let's get, well, let's change it up for a nightgown. Let's get pink. We're going to get a pink one in, oh, I, they're both cute. Maybe this one. I like this one, the embroidery on that one a little better. So 79 cents for a nightgown. Okay, and there's all kinds of corsets and girdle-like things, but I think I'm just going to be a plump little potato and not bother with one of those. <laughs> we'll assume that I already have one in my wardrobe, and I am not in the market for another one. Oh, but I will get this one here, a little uplift-style bandeau bra. That's cute. Yeah, we'll get that one. That's only 29 cents. And, and that kind of brings us to the end of the fashion section. I don't think, I'm not going to show you the whole catalog, because this is... At 1934, this thing's probably still protected under copyright. So we're going to end here. The rest of it's just sort of home goods and things. So I don't think there's any... There's a bit of fashion on the back, but it's more for uh, younger kids and kids and men, basically. So young girls and and for boys and men, I guess, actually. There's some um, very interesting uh, <laughs> men's swimsuits there. That's a look. <laughs> So I wasn't adding up as I went along. I was writing it down to keep track of what I was buying. But at the end, when I totaled everything up, I was actually closer to $30 than $20. Yeah, a little over budget <laughs> by like 50%. <laughs> so to bring this number down, what I decided to do was go back to the beginning of the catalog where they had all that fabric. And instead of buying the, the undergarments and the sleepwear, Instead, buy a couple meters of the that really reasonable broadcloth. These kind of items would be fairly simple and quick sewing projects and really brought the cost of my budget down. While it isn't necessarily more economical nowadays to make your own things, it definitely was in the 1930s. You would have saved a lot of money if you were able to be your own dressmaker, even if it's just for the simple things like the underwear, the bloomers, the nightgowns that kind of thing, it would save you a lot of money if, if you didn't have to rely on these store-bought versions. For those of you curious what all the purchases look like together, here are two snapshots of my purchases. The first one being all the garments and the second one being more the accessories and other items. <laughs> So all that for around $20. I wasn't fussy enough to try to get it like perfectly dead on $20. <laughs> this, this isn't even real. I don't have time for that. <laughs> well, that's it for this week. Let me know down in the comments what you thought of my choices or if perhaps you would have bought something different. And if you like this style of video, please let me know. I would love to do another one of these perhaps next season in the fall, maybe pick a different decade. As always, thank you for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Bye! This video is made possible through the generous support of my Patreon members. Thank you.